I love this uh, GIF here. It's just a pendulum because it lines up with the chondritive uh, cycle, right? If we understand that these waves or these long secular long waves, you know, historically it had averaged 55 years. Let me make it clear. Chondritive never said it was a fixed cycle or fixed time frame. It's uh, this is a one of the longest long waves, obviously because of central planning. Keynesian economics and our fiat monetary system. So, but what we've done is just we created the everything bubble. It's not prevented it. If anything, it's made it worse. But the key takeaway, what I want you to understand, are, are two things. One is the pendulum will swing uh, toward decentralization. That's what is Kondraita's fifth wave, unstoppable even though the so-called elites have another agenda and what they believe it's going to work. It's going to fail, and uh, but not without some hardship. Let's be honest about that because technology and the public decide the future. So the end of the fourth wave, we're looking for the end. Now, another thing I've always alluded to is like, it's this sine wave. If you understand these, this concept of how energy moves through a medium, right? Booms, busts, growth, depressions, um, civilization collapses. You know, again, it's it's always working through a medium. It does, it's never linear. The only thing that's linear is our thinking, right? I think this is an evolutionary aspect: is that if we think about the future, we're always seeing linear. We we can't see a real estate bubble. We can't see a stock market bubble. What we do as human beings is we take the current trend and then we extrapolate that. We just assume that's going to continue. And that's, I believe, why these cycles repeat. And we don't learn from history. If anything, we see that the long wave where there are academics, of course, that say it doesn't exist. It's it's clear. I mean, I've been studying the well, I've studied the long wave since the late 90s, about 10 years into the business when I discovered it the financial business and every year I'm more convinced and as I read every book on this subject from the psychological to the technological to the monetary aspect the political aspect the social cycle I don't believe it's a thesis anymore but a lot of people think that it is anyways what is the purpose the main purpose of why I wanted to launch the economic long wave and primarily because it's it will be massively disruptive to the economy we're talking about creative destruction on a complete scale social scale where everything is uplifted if it starts i believe next year in 2024 we're, we're going to see stock market real estate collapses political upheaval wars all that simply because the structure of the system we built since 1946 no longer works right it's predicated on debt and consumption which has reached its limits so to speak because the consumer's real income hasn't gone up and the price of credit which has been falling for the past 40 years no no longer allows the people to leverage that's why i'm also negative on the banks now Let's look at history. This is the S&P 500 between 1929 and 1932, 89% collapse. This is what we want to avoid. That's what I want to avoid when I designed this model and I used to manage capital and realized that this thing it was inevitable simply because it was the markets are built on credit, not incomes. A lot of capital has gone into it. So there's the S&P 500. We know the, the Nikkei, and I've actually showed how long it's taken to recover, right? So this is economic winter where it could last 18 to 20 years plus. But if you don't care where you are and you are allocating your assets, in accordance to valuations in the business cycle, you will avoid these massive losses. That's specifically the key. I mean, look at that huge correction. And that's typical, by the way. Usually, I mean, I'll show you another one. This is the Iceland index. After their massive bubble, you'd see it collapsed 
again, if you were aware that they were in a bubble, uh, just step back with your allocation. And there in 2009 was a secular low. It just dropped so much, all the bargain hunters came out. And, and since that point, let me uh, make something really clear. Since that point, you can see more than tripled uh, your, your returns since that period of time. So, you know, it, it's again, what I learned from the masters, Peter Kundal, John Templeton, Charles Brandis, is that um, value is the most important aspect within, in determining your allocation. And the, and the other aspect, of course, is where you are in the business cycle. As the business cycle ages, you want to pull back on your assets. So this is another concern. Now, let's look at one more. And this is Athens when they had their massive bubble. And again, you can see they had a, a, a severe bear market, two recessions. Uh, they had their interest rates uh, move up dramatically. But again, you, you can see normally these are two to three years to the downside, right? That's typically economic winters and credit bubbles when they burst. There's a collapse three years and then a slow buildup again. So this is typical, which is not surprising. But the giveaway again, is this is what we're trying to avoid. That's what the models are built on. Understanding history, society has made all the mistakes by leveraging up, believing real estate always go up. You'll get people, you know, saying, well, they'll, they'll stop it with UBI and printing. Well, that only makes it worse because I'll tell you why it won't work. You need economic growth. You need productivity to support the bubble. And since the bubble is artificial, you know, it's just like a, it's, it's, you know, think of a bodybuilder on steroids. As soon as you withdraw the steroids, that bodybuilder is going to shrink 25, 50%. It's the same thing. There is nothing they can do to stop this. Nothing. Because the underlying problem is there's not enough productivity. And this is what created wealth. What we had coming out of World War II, there were no asset bubbles. There was no financialization of the economy. It was growing because of productivity, new technologies, cheap oil. Uh, people were consuming. Asset prices were reasonable. Home prices were reasonable. Most of the, the economy was growing through productivity and innovation and consumption. But now it's predicated on consumption coming from an asset bubble that needs cheap credit, which is over without underlying productivity to drive it. And that's why it's going to end badly. So we can't do anything. There's nothing we can do to stop it. What we can do is how we react to it, right? It's, it provides an opportunity. I, 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 I can only articulate, I can protect my family, which I have, my nieces and my nephews, which I have, and friends and, and a lot of followers now who are, who, who are taking a position uh, so they don't or not are forced to deleverage because the economy is going to force this and the governments will become smaller and technology will shift. And that's very disruptive. But the bottom line is... Let's take advantage of the opportunities by not exposing ourselves to the downside. Interesting chart to leave you with today. And this is the U.S. federal government current expenditures interest payments. Almost a trillion dollars. Do you know what you can do with a trillion dollars in the U.S.? invested in groundbreaking technologies that will create a massive amount of wealth, help entrepreneurs. I'm not talking about a distributing to the poor because that doesn't fix the problem. How we help the middle class and the poor is by creating jobs for them so they can pay and with a sound monetary system. That issue that you see there with interest rates, that's just fiscal irresponsibility. And that is what the gold bugs or the Bitcoin crowd has always articulated. They were always going to become spendthrifts, right? They want your vote. They don't care about the future. They don't care about your future. They only care about their future. And now we have academics who are trying to justify that 
it's not going to end badly. Now here, I want you to think about a scenario. The next crisis, and the U.S. will have a crisis, if you think about their asset or real estate bubble now is larger than it was in 2007. They won't be able to bail out everyone. And if they try with collapsing revenues and skyrocketing expenditures, where is it going to come from? And that federal debt will skyrocket and so will the interest payments. Then you get a sovereign debt crisis where it crowds out the private sector and interest rates move even higher. You see how this all ends? It was always going to end badly unless you had a balance budget amendment or a sound monetary system to force politicians to live within their means. But, but again, all the voices that have warned that this was going to end badly went silent. Nobody was interested in hearing the truth. And so now we all face, look, you and I and followers, we should be okay. But let's be honest here. We're going to see a lot of people get hurt because of this. A lot of people are going to be hurt. And that's not what we want to see. But this is, this is the thing is that if you haven't studied history, you're bound to repeat it. And, and to forecast a demographic collapse, real estate collapse, monetary collapse, sovereign debt crisis, then a currency crisis, it's pretty simple, very simple, that it's inevitable. Simply because the lessons of the past are just thrown out the door. And I feel bad for Americans, Canadians, Europeans, because we're all going to suffer. And it's not the people, because the people are ignorant of how the economy works, right? Politicians and these academics have a thesis, and that thesis is now being proven incorrect. And they all pay a price. But this is what will cause a revolution. This is what will cause a popular uprising, as Bob Hoy uh, likes to say. And rights, rightly so. Because the poor and the middle class are struggling. And we're actually, every single day, we're increasing the amount of people from the middle class are moving into poverty. Because their wages, real wages, have been stagnant. I posted a chart yesterday where men's real wages are lower than they were in 1979 during the disco era. That's why men are having a hard time. I don't want to make it a rant because you know what? Rants don't solve anything. But the key is the long wave or the models, what I'm trying to do with, with uh, people with their savings and are caught up in the real estate collapse is to help them, right? This is a solution. That's why I've started even the YouTube. And wow, it's grown a lot in just in two weeks. And I appreciate the followers. But really, it's to help people, right? It's, I mean, this is why I got involved in the investment business originally, and I worked in the business 23 years. When I saw this was going to end badly, I said, well, how else can I do this? And with modern technology and the internet and the explosion of this information revolution, this is perfect. So that is, that, that's, you know, to, to get paid for something to help people uh, is, is why I got involved in the investment business. And this way I can help and guide people, right? My experience works um, uh, to, to your advantage. Now, and the thing, the most important thing I said before, I work through a real estate collapse and two stock market collapses. Well, a couple more. This is how you become a good student. A, a, a student cannot learn any lessons unless they've experienced them themselves. And you know my story, and I, I don't like to repeat it, too often, but again, is that I was involved in a real estate collapse at the same time I started the investment business, and that was a wake-up call to how things really work, and we know what happened in Japan. Anyways, um, as always, uh, if there's any questions, like, comment, uh, you know, let me know what you think. I appreciate the feedback. Yes, I've had some sound um, issues, and I'm working. I fixed all that, but this is the learning curve on YouTube for me. So I'm going through that exponential learning curve of how to make it better, what you're looking for, keeping them informative, factual, historical, so you can learn from it and profit from it, right? That's the whole reason for it. And please let anybody know 
who would be interested in understanding the uh, long wave. I know they're going to benefit because this forum here will be a way to educate yourself about everything. So you're not surprised, right? It's a satellite view of what's coming politically, socially, economically, with the markets, technology. That's a good thing. I'll, I'll be doing some updates on the technology because there's an exciting innovations that are current that are going to cause the uh, or part of the decentralized revolution. Anyways, thanks for listening. And as always, I'll talk to you soon.